Madam President, I want to join my colleagues here on an important discussion as it relates to American energy. And my colleague from the great state of Missouri uh, said it well in so many different ways. Now we're pleading from dictators to import more energy. That is one element, Madam President, of what certainly has been the Biden administration's most colossal strategic mistake of their entire first year and a half. And trust me, there's been a lot of mistakes on the Biden administration's watch. There has been nothing that has undermined American interests in terms of working families, in terms of skyrocketing inflation, in terms of national security, in terms of energy security, and yes, I'm going to talk about it, in terms of environmental policy for America and the world. Nothing has been more harmful to America's interests and in the interest of American working families than the reckless policies of the Biden administration's approach to American energy. Now, Madam President, I've talked about this issue a lot because a lot of those policies are zeroed in on my state and my constituents. But as many have already said, Senator Blunt just already said, it can be summed up, in my view, in kind of four key areas. Number one, from day one, they have come in and said, we're going to limit the production of American energy. That's happening. It's certainly happening in Alaska. Day one, the president made an order on ANWR. We got ANWR done in this Congress. Shut that down. They're canceling lease sales. The National Petroleum Reserve of Alaska, they're taking half of that off the table. Everywhere you look, they're trying to limit the production of American energy. That's a fact. Makes no sense, but it's a fact. That's number one. Number two, slow rolling and killing energy infrastructure. The ability to move energy through pipelines or LNG terminals. They're stopping it, slow rolling it, or killing it. That's a fact, okay? That is what they are doing from day one. Number three, they are going to the American financial community, John Kerry, Gina McCarthy, all these far left crazy policy folks, and saying to American banks and insurance companies, don't invest in American energy. Choking off capital to this incredibly important sector of the US economy. And when they're not doing that, they're appointing senior officials just think Comptroller of the Currency, Federal Reserve, SEC Chairman, who are undertaking policies to choke off capital to the American energy sector. That's happening. And number four, when they've seen prices spike, hardworking American families paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars more to get to work in their car or truck, the administration is going around begging dictators for more energy production. Madam President, this is an insult. We have the highest standards in the environment on American energy production. In Alaska, other places, you think the Saudis care about the, their environment? You think the Venezuelans care? You think the terrorists in Iran care? They don't. But the administration is going and begging dictators for more energy. So that's the policies of the Biden administration on energy. And we all know it's not working. It's having the predictable consequence of driving up energy costs on all American families. Of course, giving pink slips to American energy workers, who I believe are heroic workers, union workers, others, and empowering our adversaries. So that's what's happening. Now, today the president's in Boston. And I want to talk about a couple policies, energy policies, emanating from people in the communities of Boston that further show just how irrational the far left Democratic Party is on energy. But let me first talk about this issue, which I like to trot out a lot, this chart. This is a factual chart. Emission changes from major economies in the world from 2005 to present. You don't hear about this a lot, 
But take a look. Take a look at this chart. What does it show? Of all the major economies in the world, the one economy with the biggest reduction in greenhouse gas emissions is America, the United States of America, by far. Take a look. We've reduced emissions since 2005 by almost 15 percent. EU didn't do that. Germany didn't do that. Japan didn't do that. And here you go, China. A new coal plant every couple days, it seems. India, the same thing. Okay, why am I bringing out this chart? A, people need to know that we're the leader. We're not the bad guy. I know John Kerry keeps thinking we're the bad guy, goes and telling everybody we are. We're not. If every other country in the world had emission profiles like we did, you would see a much, much uh, cleaner and less emitting planet. That's a fact. Okay? So let me talk about a couple of these policies. John Kerry, climate envoy, has been reported as going to certain countries in Asia saying, you know, we really don't like hydrocarbons in America, so don't buy any of that American LNG. What? We're paying this guy's salary to say that? Whose side is he on? By the way, exporting, clean burning American LNG to places like India or China or Japan is exactly what we need to do to reduce global emissions. So you got this one guy out there, not sure why he's being paid by the US government. He, might, he should be paid by the Communist Chinese Party government. And then now, Madam President, uh, there was recent press reports that John Kerry's private jet that he flies all around the world on last year emitted o over 300 tons of CO2. What? Yeah. Look, he's smug, hypocritical, his policies are hammering the middle class, and now this. John Kerry is one of the single biggest polluters and GH greenhouse gas emitters in the world for an individual. So, look, in Boston, one of the best things the president can do today is either fire John Kerry or ask him to resign. That would be great. That would probably do a lot for climate in America. But let me give another policy that should be raised in Massachusetts. Madam President, I'd like to submit for the record, this is a Boston Globe editorial, a very long one, from February 12, 2018. It's called Our Russian Pipeline and Its Ugly Toll. I'd like to submit it for the record. Without objection. So this, again, is far-left policies that are having a negative impact on actual environment and climate issues. This is the Boston Globe editorial page, not some right-wing editorial page. And they're writing about how the Massachusetts state legislature said, we're not going to have any pipelines coming across Massachusetts to be able to take gas from Pennsylvania and let people in Boston use it. Here's the editorial page. Massachusetts reliance on imported gas. So what happens? So they're importing all their gas from Russia in the Arctic. How does that help America? You have American gas, American pipelines, produced by Americans with the highest environmental centers, coming over across Massachusetts to Boston. Nope. The Massachusetts state legislature says, we're too good for that. We're not going to build pipelines. So what do they do? They import all their gas from Russia. Madam President, this is an editorial that says this policy is insane. And that's, in essence, the definition of what we're seeing by the Biden administration, by John Kerry, by the Massachusetts state legislature. All of this 
these woke pronouncements that actually have the impact of degrading our environment, empowering dictators, laying off Americans, and raising the price of energy on our economy, small businesses, and working families. So I'm hopeful that today in Boston, the president starts to get serious about American energy policy, that he starts to reverse his administration's focus on shutting down the production of American energy, on permitting pipelines and infrastructure, and on helping finance energy projects and production. That's the reversal he could make and announce today. That would help the American people. It would help my constituents. Unfortunately, I think that's unlikely to happen. And the people of our great nation are going to continue to suffer. And the environment is going to continue to suffer because of these policies on energy that undermine American interests everywhere you look. I yield the floor.